Welcome to the fifth and last exercise of Introduction to Modern Brain Computer Interface Design. In this exercise, we're um, now looking at offline scripting and offline analysis in BCI Lab, which is you know, primarily for, um, for paper content and research content. So uh, what we're specifically looking at here is the batch scripting features of BCI Lab. You've already um, automatically used BCI Train and these kinds of things before in, in the previous exercise. Here, we'll take, a, uh, we'll take the approach that you did in the previous exercise, and we'll apply it to all the data sets of the BCI competitions number three and number four. So that's actually a whole lot of data sets. And to get started with that, it is, by the way, the script is going to be rather simple. So to get started with this, uh, again, you start MATLAB, you CD into your BCI Lab course directory and start BCI Lab. All the same things that I said before apply. And the data for this task is in exercise package slash ex5. And uh, what it contains uh, is, again, imagine movements, but this time the data comes from multiple labs. And th the tasks that these different labs used are slight variations of the same story. So also the markers that are being used vary slightly. And, and furthermore, some of these data sets are actually rather pathological. So they are uh, purposefully very few trials and so on. So it's hard to deal with that uh, with certain kinds of methods. And so to um, start analyzing this, you should find a script in this folder, which is called batch underscore script dot m. And this script should work out of the box because um, I've already predefined where the folders are in the script and what the right marker names are. And so because the script already runs and already uh, runs an analysis for a default approach, you can already start it right away and start crunching some numbers. And the intermediate results that it produces will later be reused when you run the script again, perhaps with new approaches. And now um, you are asked to add the approaches that you defined in the previous um, exercise to those that you're running the batch analysis over. So if you were creative in the previous exercise and created a whole bunch of variations, here's the place to put them all in, in the same style uh, as is instructed in this batch script. And uh, there's, there's one more thing. If what you will probably have to do is you will have to override the length of the epochs in your approach because in there's some subtasks in this, in this data set where people had very short imagination periods, just half a second until 2.5 seconds after the instruction, as opposed to three to four. And so to make this work properly, you have to override this for the approaches that you want to use. And so to find this parameter, you, you might use the guidance that I gave in this one lecture where you go through the GUI and find where it is and extend your approach definition. In any case, when you're done with the um, editing and have written it up, all up, you can basically cancel whatever is computing still in the background or so and just relaunch it with your new approaches. And then it'll just reuse what it has pre-crunched. Of course, you, you, can, uh, you, you can also not do this pre-crunching business if you're willing to wait a little bit longer then. So once you're done with all the computations, you could also you will get the results in some variable. If you want to reproduce these results again, you can also just run the last command in the script once more, and then it will load all the results from this, so on. And here's a little bonus exercise. I, um, for those who are interested to learn a little bit more, I ask you to implement a flavor of the CSP approach that adds a stationary subspace analysis, which is a particular rather novel signal processing technique. It basically finds stationary components and non-stationary components. And the task is to remove the non-stationary or most non-stationary components from the data. And that is uh, documented in a filter. And in, if you really wanted to go all the way, this function has a free parameter, which is how many stationary components it should retain. And you can make this a parameter search and search over over whatever, everything from, from zero components to, to 10 components or something. And so you basically automatically optimize then uh, over this parameter and quantify how well you're doing. So that's just for those who really want to push uh, uh, the boundaries of the toolbox and their computation time budget. Good luck with that.